Good morning, everybody. I am the Cynic. What constitutes a better world? A standard logic would dictate the word better and its involvement in the future of the planet Earth as well as its people is an idea that's subject to interpretation. This is to say that not everybody will agree upon its definition and implications. So, we'll be using as universally acceptable the term as I dare to convey. There will be no direct address to sexual selection in this video for the sake of trying to give an outline for what constitutes the subject matter for the sole sake of having a platform on which to base the idea of a quote unquote better world. Some may disagree with a few of the things here or there about my claims, but the majority is rather obvious. Alright, starting off, I think it's safe to say that most people will agree that aggression, or hurting and stealing from others for no real reason, is a universally perceived wrong. Using this as a base to build on, let's ask, what makes people lash out and or hurt others for no reason? Obviously, this can range from all manner of things. Parental influence, genetics, culture, taught moral values, resource scarcity, and so on and so forth. And while each of these topics would, and are if you look around the internet, videos in and of themselves, I'll be giving a brief synopsis of each. So, first, child upbringing. Obviously, a child's nurturing and experiences will have significant impact on their psychological health as an adult. The behaviors they observe and then emulate from their caregivers will be indicative to their behaviors they exhibit later on in life due to the consequences, assimilation, and learning that results. The key here is the child's psychological health, which, I would argue, is optimized with a healthy relationship with their parents, observing a healthy relationship between said parents, balanced moral and ethical views, limited space and freedoms for mistakes to be made and learned from, ideology slash knowledge of what respect is and how it is earned, and a distinguished sense of right and wrong. Obviously, the words healthy, balance, ethical, and values are all pretty vague here, but I'll pin those definitions down later on. A negative example in child upbringing would be neglecting a child, failing to feed and protect them from situations that, are, that they are incapable of surviving. A positive example would be adequate time spent with a child, teaching them and showing them affection. All of this is universally speaking, of course. Second, genetics, or behavior genetics. Francis Galton, who was praised as the first behavioral geneticist back in the 1800s for his work in irritability of human ability, and his work expanded by what's known as beyond irritability in the form of twin research to determine if characteristics inherited by previous generations both exist and were a significant factor in behavioral development. Twin studies have been the primary tool to determine the influence of genetics upon behavior, but results are controversial to the extent that the influence due to the inability of scientists to completely replicate the twin's environment to the point of adequate duplication. Behavioral genetics is almost synonymous with, evolution, with evolutionary psychology. A, ne a negative example of behavioral genetics would be aggression and the desire to bring harm to others who's done nothing to deserve it, and a positive example would be assertiveness in gaining accomplishments. All of this, universally speaking, of course. Third, culture, defined as the arts and other manifestations of human intellectual and uh, human intellectual achievement regarding collectivity culture impacts cultural impact upon children is the external force of influence past the family as the child grows and explores the world around them they discover the lifestyles and behaviors of those around them and use these behaviors as another base in which to determine their own behaviors for both the sake of social acceptance and a moral compass typically manifested in the argument of, well, everybody else is doing it. Cultures determine what constitutes normality. An explanation in the toxicity of culture is the primitive and impractical belief in a virgin sacrifice in order to yield good crops. A positive explanation would be the belief in freedom so long as nobody else is hurt. Again, all this is universally speaking, of course. Fourth, 
taught moral values. While culture is the broad influence and the child's upbringing is the implied teacher, moral values are the nitty-gritty details upon the decisions, perspectives, preconceived notions, respect, and structure of how an individual will ultimately interact with others, the world, and themselves. Morals, values, and ethics impact empathy, decisions, thought, actions, and perspectives via thought processes and conclusions based on what is taught. Right and wrong, good and bad, acceptable and not acceptable, what is to be respected and what is to be shunned or stopped, who is to be assisted, to what degree, and who is to be dismissed. If sides are to be chosen with prejudice or if one should remain neutral until an informed decision is made. If the individual should get involved and not involved at all. And most importantly, asking why. An example of a moral negative would be to commit rape due to a cultural influence that claim that act acceptable. A moral positive would be assisting a lost child at a carnival. Keep in mind, I said morally right, not safe if you're a man. All of this, universally speaking, of course. And fifth, resource scarcity. Resource defined. A stock of supply or money or materials or staff or other assets that can be drawn on by a person or organization in order to function effectively. Scarcity defined as being in short supply. Resource scarcity is one of, if not the largest influence within any human being's life. It determines almost everything listed along with something even more important survivability. Without the proper resources necessary to meet basic human need, the result is obviously death. Food, water, air, and shelter are the basic resources that Maslow and I agree on. Again, obviously. Food scarcity will breed a culture of fierce competition where tribes or nations focus more on strength and speed in order to outmaneuver or overpower any perceived threats, as well as hunt down game for consumption for any for themselves and the, and the rest of their respective tribes. The effect on the children would be their sense of security and attachment being shaken, as their upbringing in an uncertain and unstable environment would deprive them of, a fa of fathers lost in battle and potential raids on their homes. A more modern example would be mass manufacturing of books, newspapers, or computers for the internet. Without these, people would be far less knowledgeable than we are today, but also far less misinformed. Perhaps it's just me, but prior to the internet, my thought process was less focused on logical thinking and more prone to emotional thinking. However, through knowledge that I've gained from the internet and arguments presented to me therein, like many other men, I've become more aware of the incredulous ways men have been treated in society since time immemorial and thus have become a MGTOW. Now, obviously, there are other factors into creating a better world. Environmentalism, health, altruism, government, knowledge, entertainment, so on and so forth. Understand the aspects I've listed are the base of, non of the non-aggression principle and human psychology. The reason for this being is that humans are the ones who determine the actions taken that impact these issues directly and indirectly. It is the installment of behaviors and ethical codes of conduct within tomorrow's generation that will determine if they place more focus on altruism or not, if they will take action to be more environmentally aware or not, if they will be more mindful of their health and diet and exercise or not. To cover every single aspect of what a better world quote unquote, entails would outlive me and sure as hell outlive my interest in video making. So, I'll do what I feel, and if you'd like to make a suggestion on how I could improve or expand, I'll consider it. Aside from that, the next video will be on sexual selection and the welfare state. I am the Cynic, everybody. Have a nice day.